Well, hi. My name is Yoni Epstein. Okay. Um, I'm the CEO of Ancora Medical. Um, I'm actually presenting, presenting here as last year winner. And what we are doing today, we are developing or actually develop a surgical sewing machine. Now, when we look at uh, suturing, we see that it's a basic element in almost every surgical procedure. However, it is one of the most technical and time consumer part of the surgery. If you look at the evolution of suturing, we see that 100 years ago, suturing was done with a thread and a needle, and we are still exactly doing the same today, even when using a $2 million robot. We are just mimicking surgical suturing. Can you please uh, click on the movie? Okay, so this is our device. It looks like a tucker, but actually is a suturing device. It has two modes, one for suturing and the second for tightening. So the surgeon will insert the device into the abdominal cavity through a five millimeter port. He will go to the designated area. Okay, he will press the shaft towards the tissue and there is a shallow, very shallow needle that penetrating the tissue. Once he's in the position, he's just pressing a trigger. He can press any number of, de or deploy any number of uh, sutures that he would like in any location. And when he's done, he will just go out uh, of the of device. Now we can also control the depth. So when we are uh, suturing, we can go to the posterior, past the posterior fascia, or pass the anterior fascia in order to have a stronger suture. Now, once we are done, we will eject the device out of, a, of the abdominal cavity. We will change it into a tightening mode. And by doing that, we are actually changing the spool. You'll see that in a second, we'll change the spool uh, into a ratchet. We will do a slip note. We will assemble a, a cap, which is basically a knot pusher. And then we just push it towards the tissue, approximating it. Now, it's interesting because when we do it the same with sutures, uh, there is a lot of friction. When there is a friction, we cannot actually do this approximation. But as you can see in the picture, on the right side, you see you ha we have a, reg a, a little ring. So we actually reduce the friction. So we can easily do the uh, approximation. Now we can repeat that again and again until we have closed the defect at all. Now, <clears throat> so as I said, it can be figure of eight, it can be running stitch, it can be inter uh, interrupted stitch, it can be intra or extra corporeal knot tying. Okay, so you saw, you have seen the procedure and it's an automated device, it's compatible with a robot because the only thing you need to do is press a trigger or press a button instead. But it's not just that, it's it's a new concept of a suture, because when we usually suture, we have a thread. Now, the thread is very thin. It's like a cheese knife. And then when there is tension, and we are talking about a lot of tension in the abdominal cavity, we are actually cutting through the tissue fibers. Now, and then we see herniation and stuff like that. With our device, you can see the, the ankles on the left side. The surface area is much greater, so the tension spread, so it's less traumatic to the tissue. So this is one element. But the second element, which is even more important, is the ischemia part. When we do a suture, we do an O shape. So if we have blood vessels inside the suture, we entrap them and we cause ischemia and then necrosis. And then it's like the little Dutch boy and the dam. We have, we have a slit, we have abdominal pressure, startedly uh, opening it up until we get herniation. With our device, you can see on the left side, you can see it's not an O shape, it's a U shape. So even if over tightening, the nerves and the blood vessels are not uh, captured, are not entrapped, and there is less risk for ischemia. So it's basically the same concept as in Israel's own literature. Do a lot of small stitches, very dense, in order to catch as much tissue as you can without doing ischemia. 
exactly the same concept, only in a standardized device that will enable everybody to do the same outcome. Just a glimpse. We try to close a, a congenital a, a defect, hernia defect in a pig. It was a pretty big defect. It was seven centimeters long and 5.5 centimeters wide. Uh, we closed it with our device. We placed the mesh. We waited for five weeks, and then we uh, sacrificed the pig. The defect was completely closed. Where we are now. So first of all, it's a pleasure for me. Uh, we, just, we have just closed a, a, a financial round with a big strategic uh, partner, which is uh, active in both laparoscopy fields and endoscopy fields. So it's a big deal for us. It gives us back wind, wind in order to progress ahead. Um, R&D wise, we are now um, in a freeze mode. So it means that we started, we are now in the midst of the VNV, what we call validation and verification in order to finalize FDA submission sometime this year. Um, production wise, we still cannot uh, manufacture mass production, but we have small scale production, so we can produce uh, a lot of numbers, in numbers, about thousands, okay, but not tens of thousands yet. We have a granted IP already in the US and we hope to get another one really soon. And uh, in terms of business development, of course, we are in contact with most of the big companies. We have a lot of good feedback. We have different corporations with different companies, uh, each one in a different phase and so on. So there is a lot of interest and we'll see what, how it will go out. And we hope to start our clinical trial first in human, hopefully this year. Maybe it will delay a little bit to last the next year, but this is where we are today. Thank you. <laughs>